Hey everybody, this is Nicholas with Xena Design Build and I'm joined with Nita Upchurch with the Redefined Home. So we are here to talk about uh, the five senses, but we're going to specifically talk about visual. Exactly. Because okay. I think that people don't realize um, just how much their interior spaces affect their choices that they make in their life and how they feel. So people, everybody wants to feel good when they come home. They either want to feel um, energized or they want to be able to relax mm -hmm. and your home needs to be able to provide that for you. And our vision is one of the senses that really dominates what we do, how we feel. And how you design. Or and how, it's yeah. exactly how I design. I'm going to go in and I'm going to talk to the homeowner and we're going to say, what is your focus here? Do you want to relax? Do you want to energize? Are you feeling the blahs when you come home because your house is blah? Or, you know, how is this affecting you? And that's how we start out. Nice. So, so you first get an idea of what the client wants. Exactly. At first, uh, by listening and all that good yes. stuff. And then, um, so let's say, what are, what are the, the do's? And then let's, let, let, then we'll go into like, what are the don'ts? So okay. what are some do's on maybe creating a space to make it feel nicer or warmer or like more relaxing okay so to create um, a more relaxing home you're going to want to eliminate clutter which that's really big right now everybody wants to eliminate clutter but that's harder said than done because we a lot of times have a lot of emotions wrapped around our clutter because our clutter was purchased at one time for a reason so there's a sentimental value or a purpose when that no longer happens then that needs to go away and you're not using it for that reason um, warmer colors and if you're noticing now design trends are starting to warm up the grays a little bit instead of them being a cool gray they're a little bit warmer I call them kind of grayish some people call them grayish <laughs> but they're like a sable or mink or those kind of colors um, that are coming in if you select the grays and actually I've been saying this for years but everything cycles around but browns are eventually going to be coming back in and that's why the grays are warming up so you can just see how the industry is slowly start bringing in those warmer colors mm -hmm. um, those colors are actually going to make us feel warm and cozy and comfortable um, and so they're gonna it's gonna help prevent a more or prevent provide mm -hmm. a more um, uh, embracing yeah. kind of feel so you can kick back with that. Yeah, and and like even even like this place, like uh, the walls are r pretty pretty darn white. Oh yeah. But but it has the the browns and the warmer tones with and the flooring and the flooring creates a lot of warmth when the walls are pretty modern, yes. but it creates a lot of warmth. And you can do that. So white is really popular right now, especially white kitchens. Mm -hmm. And white kitchens can be a little bit over the top stark and they look great on HGTV mm -hmm. and they're awesome to like look at in a magazine but when you actually go to live there they affect us a little bit differently mm -hmm. so you do want to bring in some warm elements you've done a wonderful job with this wood going uh, contrasting with the um, quartz uh, the white the off-white countertop so and you've got the wood floors and all that stuff and it really does help warm up the whites um, it makes it very human. I mean, humans like that feeling. Yeah. And they don't even realize it. Um, so there are lots of things to consider. Uh, you know, you can look at Architectural Digest and those homes are over the top, but you wouldn't necessarily want to live there. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, and even too, like, not even just color of walls, but like the color of lighting too, right? Mm -hmm. So like... Yeah, like we want to have the more warmer lighting. Uh, I don't mean like, it doesn't need to be like crazy warm, but you need to have a, a, an appetizing warmth. So the cool lights will actually make our skin tones look placid and we look kind of sickly. Mm -hmm. And if we look at each other and we're looking sickly at each other, it's like we're going to start feeling physically sickly. Yeah. So you want to have those nice warm flesh tones. You want to have the nice warm colors to your food and um, also to your accents. Mm -hmm. So another thing too for kitchens, because of the white kitchens, um, eliminate as much clutter from the kitchen as possible, but then, you know, have a big bowl of beautiful uh, fresh fruit. You, all Fruit comes in all these fun colors. Make sure you eat the fruit because you don't want the fruit flies, but, um, you know, beautiful fruit. If you're not a fruit person, then get some flowers, get a potted plant. Have fresh herbs in your kitchen so that you can actually cut from the herb and use that. Mm -hmm. Do some things that 
provide little splashes of color, but don't have uh, everything sitting out on the countertop. Yeah. So don't have your potato chip sack sitting out. Those need to be put away. It's just like you want one splash. Yeah. So so if your kitchen, if you if you want to go for this warm warm or this sorry this white white kitchen, right. white walls, white kitchen, white counter, what if white's in, but uh, but having something that gives you a, a sense of color or a sense of warmth too. Yeah. Can um, you just imagine a big big beautiful wooden bowl or a big pottery bowl or something filled with oranges and lemons and limes and oh my gosh it's just gonna be like yes yeah and you're just gonna love it or flowers or a or a, or a, a plant, plant. <laughs> yeah, a plant. it works and if you have enough light like you have lots of light in here i mean there to cook with fresh herbs is fantastic if yeah. you like to cook and so you just have some dill and some chive and some stuff sitting in your kitchen it just provides a little splash of green mm -hmm. and you can actually snip from those and you put it in your soup nice. so it's yeah. nice yeah so i want to kind of backtrack a little bit to, to the lighting so one thing that we we use a lot of because you talked about warm lighting so um, and just to give a people an idea of what warm lighting is or what, what cool lighting is. But um, so typically when you refer to it, you buy bulbs at the store, daylight lights is around 5,000 Kelvin. And then warm lighting is around 3,000 Kelvin. And we, we try to design stuff with around the warm lighting. Yes, where it's like 3, the 3,000, yes. 2,700 Kelvin. Exactly. Where, where, it's, where it's this warmer lighting. Um, and then when you go to like Edison bulbs, then you get stuff that's a little bit lower in the spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, but they also provide a really cool ambiance. So I think a combination of maybe some Edison's, those yes. are really popular nowadays. Right. Um, and then also just giving the, the 3000 Kelvin light, right. which is warm. So you want to have a mix of like, you want to be able to illuminate the room. So that's what recess lighting does. A lot of rooms have recess lighting. It's there to be, provide this big overall even lighting. But, um, but when you're in the living room or whatever, you want intimate lighting as well. You want to be able to turn on a table lamp or you want some softer lamp, uh, lighting. And so that's where you can use your Edison bulbs. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe over the dining room table, you have a chandelier. You have recess lighting in the dining room as well when you want to really turn it up for that six-year-old birthday party. But you know, at night, if you're wanting to calm down and you just want to have a nice dessert with friends, okay, let's turn the lighting down. That's where those nice warm lights come in, so. Yeah, the, the warm lighting, like having a combination of both is really great, especially when you said at nighttime, like um, I've read done a little bit of research about sleep and um, sleeping, if you have like bright or blue colored lights, it can actually keep you awake or have less less or worse night's sleep. So I exactly. think that having that warmer light's really nice at night. So that, I'm glad you brought that up because um, this is something that if you're a parent and you have little ones or that you just get up in the middle of the night a lot, do not just flip on a light switch to turn on or to go out in the middle of the night. So you've been sleeping. So I always tell parents or uh, anybody that has to get up in the middle of the night frequently, use rose colored night lights. Not the blue or not the white light, um, because uh, the rose color does not mess up our melatonin. Mm -hmm. So the melatonin is when you flip on a switch or you have a blue light or a white light uh, going on in the middle of the night and you're tripping your way to the crib to get to the baby, um, then you can't get back to sleep. Mm -hmm. And that's because of your melatonin, like, oh, it's daylight. Yeah, and it's, it's, the, the sun's up now. And, yeah. Um, so, and if you want to go a little bit extreme, I did this for a little while, um, but it doesn't, show, it doesn't show very well, so I've changed it out in my place. But um, you can actually buy like bug lights that are very, very yellow in color. Oh, fun. Um, that are super, super low on the Kelvin scale or the warm scale. Mm -hmm. um, and you can put those in your bedroom for actually nighttime reading or, or whatnot, so you're not messing with your circadian brain That's as much. cool. So. And then another thing you can do, because I, I like that idea, yeah. um, another thing you can do is those um, salt lamps. Mm -hmm. They're pink. The Himalayan salt? Yes. Yeah. And they're, they're, they have this nice pink glow, mm -hmm. and they make them in all different sizes. So a little one, like just say you have them plugged into the bathroom mm -hmm. um, as just a little nightlight. It's not only doing its Himalayan salt thing, mm -hmm. but it's also providing that warm light for people, guests or whatever, to get to the bathroom in the middle of the night. So. Yeah. Is that too? Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. yeah. And then, okay, so let's, let's talk a little bit more about the clutter thing. So we're talking about minimizing and um, one comment you made to me earlier is really having a home for everything so yes. you don't have as much out visually. Right. So talk about like, let's say you're designing a kitchen or a bathroom or how do you do that exactly? Well, okay, so for kitchens, um, I have lots of, I have lots of in my head for kitchens. But kitchens are a very um, chaotic place. 
there's a lot of things happening in the kitchen and it's a lot of times kitchens are the home or the hub of the home. Everybody wants to stand around and talk to the cook. Okay, so there's all these things going on in the kitchen. You don't need to add to the chaos of the kitchen with external clutter. So if you are potato chips or you eat uh, candy or whatever that is, all those things, bread sacks, all those things need to go in the cupboard out of sight. You know, you have your beautiful bowl of grapes and whatever sitting there. That's fine. Your kids will be eating healthy snacks because the first thing they see is what they're going to want to eat. If it's a potato chip sack or if it's grapes, you want them to go for the grapes instead mm -hmm. of the potato chips. Mm -hmm. um, also, you don't want to have a bunch of appliances sitting out on the countertop. Um, that's another thing. So just... There's all kinds of solutions, and you know this, being a contractor and a designer yourself. Um, get rid of all the, the toaster, the toaster mm -hmm. oven, all that stuff. So I would say one appliance on the, on the counter, <laughs> one appliance, and then everything else. And you can make, um, in your cabinets, you can have these lift up uh, trays where if you've got a big stand mixer, you can just lift it up out of the cupboard and then tuck it back down. It doesn't need to sit out all the time. So the more clutter-free the kitchen is, the um, more clear your mind is. So um, yeah. Yeah. it allows you to perform better, to yeah. have better like cooking and even talking with your friends over the bar as you're cooking. If you don't have a bunch of stuff just to constantly distracting you, then you can actually go to the task again. Yeah, yeah. So. And, and one thing though, so I was just at the International Building Show and um, and one thing that they talked a little bit about too is this simplifying is, is simplifying is in right um, but um, uh, in one presentation they talked about actually having bigger pantries but then having less cabinetry which actually can save you money in the end and it creates this simplest simplistic form so uh, i think that's a cool thing to note because then you can actually hide everything and have less cabinetry, have less of an impact on cost. I love that. Design, I too. love that. Yeah, and having a walk-in pantry is so nice, especially if you have a family, and especially yeah. if you shop at Costco, because you're buying like five pounds instead of something instead of one pound of something. Well, get it put away, and and the pantries can be beautifully mm -hmm. organized. Yeah. I mean, well, and the nice thing about a pantry too is like your your options to to customize or to make put bigger items or like it's it's limitless in terms of like how you want to do that but okay. like as a cabinet on an upper cabinet or a lower cabinet you're really restricted to counter height you're restricted to depth mm -hmm. on the uppers um, because you can't just make them whatever size you want so right. and you want to have work surface yeah so you, the, the uppers can't go all the way well mm -hmm. not all the uppers can yeah. go all the way yeah. some of them yeah. can but yeah. not all of them but you know, so you, you do have limitations, and mm -hmm. in the pantry, you can have that. And it still needs to be, uh, or in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, when you walk into a pantry, it still needs to be inviting. You don't want to walk in there and say, oh my gosh, where am I going to find this thing? You know, you mm -hmm. want it to be like, oh, I love coming in here, you know, kind of an experience. Mm -hmm. And it makes you just want to cook healthier yeah. and uh, cook more at, at home instead of eating out or grabbing a microwave food or something, you know, it makes mm -hmm. you want to like, oh yeah, okay, I can whip this up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind yeah. of fun. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so if you have a lot of clutter, cl visual clutter create, causes mind clutter. So if you want to be able to finish your tasks, not get distracted with other things, um, be more efficient, uh, have more creativity, simplifying. Yeah. Yeah, and we're now we're in a time of just so many options and everything instantaneous. So I think that this now is a good time to start eliminating more and more clutter, so we I can simplify that. life a little bit. Exactly. But, simple um, is or what is that? Simple is more or whatever. Yeah. Oh, little. What is it? What is that? I'm story? not sure. <laughs> but, a, but I like it. Though. Yeah, I'm working on it. I'll get it. I'll get it eventually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um. So anyway, yeah. yeah so that that's always good too. Um. That can go down to as far as even your area rugs. I've been in a lot of kitchens where they use a lot of area rugs, like there's one at the sink, there's one at the back door, there's one at the oven, because that's where you stand the most. Um, I always try to simplify that as much as possible. Again, simplicity is best. Mm -hmm. um, so get one big long runner, or maybe you have a, a kind of a squarish kitchen. Well, maybe you get just a big area rug. It's mm -hmm. just right there in the center that helps you provide some cushion underfoot, but it's not like a bunch of little scatter rugs. Mm -hmm. So. Scattered rugs are scattered thoughts. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add to, to that? You know? Well, I, you know, I, I know that the white kitchens are really in right now, and I will say that if you 
are thinking you want an all white kitchen, um, you may find that that is gonna create a really harsh, um, for someone to live there, a harsh environment. Um, it's gonna actually be overstimulating to our senses and it may cause overeating and over um, eating the wrong things. Mm -hmm. So um, it, that's why we need to soften it down mm -hmm. uh, with some contrast of warmth. Yeah. Um, you know, you're using stone against wood. Okay, the wood softens the stone. Mm -hmm. You're using stone against, or I mean, you're using metal against wood. It softens the metal. Yeah, so. I, th I think that's a really valid point there. And like, so softening it with light, the, the, the color of your light, mm -hmm. um, softening it with wood tones as much as possible. So if you can introduce maybe a butcher block countertop or mm -hmm. maybe some floating shelves that are out of butcher block or wood, or mm -hmm. maybe you just have some things that you stage your kitchen with, they're, yeah. they're like a wood bowl, like right. a exactly. fruit, you know, you know those, something that gives you some, some yeah. warmth. To those actually. big old hand carved, uh, they used to be bread bowls that they used to make, but they're like handmade and they're cool. They're like this mm -hmm. big and they're really cool. But you know, the other thing too, you mentioned open shelves is that open shelves uh, and mm -hmm. glass fronted doors uh, also create clutter. So if you have open shelves or you have a glass fronted door, you definitely want to stage those. Those are part of your design now. Yeah, it's part a of your decoration. Case at that right. point, yeah. So let's say maybe you drink coffee or tea a lot in your home. Well, now you have an open shelf. Well, how cool would it be to just have a row of white mugs sitting on that shelf? Yeah. It's easy for you to grab. It's nice and clean. But it, let's say instead you put on that open shelf a whole bunch of different spices and they're up and down and there's an yeah. oil bottle and or cups with all these logos yeah, and stuff right. yeah right all of a sudden now that's just like a mess mind clutter yeah. yeah it's mind clutter exactly yeah. mind clutter i love it yeah uh mind clutter so you know just think about how those open shelves are going to work or a glass fronted door so your glass fronted door that has all these different colored of packages behind it like potato chips or cereal boxes or whatever um, that's causing clutter. Yeah. But if you had some beautiful serving dishes sitting behind there, or tea kettles, or whatever it is your family uses, now it's like, oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. and yeah, the one thing that's cool about that too is it's a simple look, but it, it like forces you to not be cluttered. Like if you have, sometimes if you design a kitchen with too much cabinetry, which is which is good in some ways, but then it allows you to just throw stuff in the cabinet, and then and then there's clutter, but it's not visually to you until you open it up, which can still be frustrating. It can because so, then you can't find anything because they have to pull everything out because it's in the back or whatever. Right? Yeah. So. So I think it's good to have a spot for everything, but not extra spots for everything. Exactly. Because then you get cluttered, but it's cluttered behind the That's scenes. Right. Yeah. You know, the more stuff you bring into your home. I always, I, I don't know if you've ever decluttered, but the more stuff you bring into the home, the more it weights you down. Mm -hmm. I mean, so when you start to declutter, it's almost like you start feeling lighter and lighter. And like, it makes you want to declutter more because it's like, oh, I didn't it's realize, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can breathe again. And you didn't realize that all that stuff was just weighting you down. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I just find it so fun when somebody, realizes that it's like all of a sudden they decluttered their cabinets and it's like for one thing they're more efficient at cooking mm -hmm. um if you're altitudinally challenged like i am you know it's like you don't have you can see what's up there now you yeah. don't have to like climb on a ladder and yeah, like yeah, get yeah. up like there. these you gotta yeah. climb I mean, yeah, yeah. But that's they're cool they're yeah. cool but that's how you put stuff that you only need yeah, a few you times a year yeah yeah, yeah for so sure. it all works because you need yeah. those spaces too but yeah. you just don't need to get into them all the time but um but yeah, so I mean, you just kind of think about um, less is more. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant to more. say. Yeah, <laughs> Woo! Less is more. Yeah. Less is more. Yeah. Um, yes. So the less you have, actually, the better things are. Mm -hmm. um, just the things that need to be in your life are the things that you're currently using a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, the things that you that delight you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that really uplift you. Um, even if it's, you know, you inherited something from a relative, but you don't like it, but you can't get rid of, you feel like, oh my gosh, it was Aunt Bertha's and I have to have it and I didn't even like Aunt Bertha. Mm -hmm. well, okay, give it to another family member. Mm -hmm. You don't have to keep it in your life. Yeah. You know, it's like pass, if it's a legacy thing, pass it on to a cousin or somebody else and say this was Aunt Bertha's and have to it. And mm -hmm. then you come back and you don't have that, you're tripping over. Yeah. So yeah. it's just turning loose. Yeah, I think a lot of these are like really, really great talking points. Um, so let's let's kind of let's kind of recap this, right? So let's let's recap this. So I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna say like the some things that I learned or some uh, like three bullet points, and I'll, I'll let you do three bullet. Are you gonna go first? No, you go okay. at it. I'll go first. Yeah. 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 So I think that you know the first the first thing we talked about was was color, but but 
figuring out what, like you said, get, figuring out the purpose of the space and what, what people, how people want to feel. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I, but in my opinion, I think the warmer colors is, is the better route to go or something to feel make you feel more relaxed. So the warmer colors is great. Um, and then using warmer colors with lighting. I think that's, that's huge for me because I, 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 I lean towards a little bit more modern looks, but I think that you can use warmer lighting to still have a modern look, but create a space that feels warm as well. Right. Um, and then we, we talked about clutter, but more specifically, I think that um, you mentioned having a space for everything. And then also we talked about having only a space for everything and not too much space because you have clutter behind the scenes. So I think that was probably another big pop talk, talking point for me. And then, mm-hmm. um, and then creating warmth in some way. So even if you're doing a white kitchen, uh, bringing in some, some element for warmth. Mm-hmm. And I think that's true. Even like you said, you like contemporary, all the, all the uh, styles of design. You can use these elements, and if you don't feel comfortable with um, how to pull this off, that's where you bring in, you know, someone Lita like that. Yeah. And, so, and then that's what we do, is we bring these in to create, in a contemporary, it can be transitional, it can be industrial, it can be whatever, um, we can bring those elements together, and then um, it creates a warm space, but it's still really cool. Yeah, and you're going to be spending so much time in your home um, that it's, it's important to get it right. And, mm-hmm. uh, there's so many little things that Nita can, to, can talk to customers about mm-hmm. to really help your fa- space feel better. Mm-hmm. You don't always have to necessarily do like a big renovation. No. I mean, we certainly would like you to, but, <laughs> but, or, or build a new house, but, um, but you can do little things that really can make a big impact. Yeah. yeah. So. Just maybe, maybe you're just painting one wall or maybe mm-hmm. you're uh, just doing a little thing. I actually changed the shift of a living room. It was just the craziest thing that ever happened. We put in two different lamps. I mean, they, we put in two lamps. It was a pair of lamps. They were cool lamps. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you know, it was on a fire, big, big fireplace wall. They had these niches on the side, but they needed some height. We put in these big, really cool lamps on either side. I mean, it shifted, shifted the whole yeah. room. It doesn't have to be millions of dollars. It doesn't have to be thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. But um, sometimes those can give you even more bang. <laughs> yeah. but, but it can be, you can go at any stage yeah. that you want to go. Yeah, um, and, and you, you're you happy to work with them on their own budget. And any uh, any budget, yeah. It's, mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. There's not any project too small because mm-hmm. you have to start somewhere and it just snowballs at that point because once you start having your home support you, your energy, then you want to build on that. It's like, oh, I didn't realize. I've been in homes where they say, oh, we don't use that room. We don't go in that room. We don't use that room. Well, why not? There's mm-hmm. got to be a reason for that. Why are you not using that room? Mm-hmm. And that's where you come in and you start thinking, well, let's fix it. Yeah, let's do something. Yeah. So, so, so what was, so going to recap, what, what, oh, yeah. what, are, what are the three things that you want people to make sure they take away from this? Well, less is more. Okay. I just think in, in America, uh, we have way too, every American has way too much stuff, yeah. I think. I agree. Um, we, we like to build small too, so I think it's fun. Yeah. You can do a really, really cool impact in a small space. Yeah, and it can look really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think that we want to try to, we, we live in a very high-paced um, world, and so I do think when we come home at night, it's good to be able to like, step back from that and just relax um right so let the colors in your home warm you up calm you down um i love and if nothing else our sleep is so important with how we look at the world so i love nicholas's idea of the bug lights (laughs) and my rose himalayan rose lamps because of quartz lamps whatever they are salt lamps um because that will not let you get this interrupted sleep, you need to have eight hours of sleep. And I know uh, most people don't get that, and they should. Seven to eight hours, you really should in order to feel healthy and strong the next day. Um, your body needs to do that. Uh, so, And then another thing I will just throw in is that, if speaking of sleep, is that your bedroom really needs to be your most calming place mm. in the house. So, it means clean. <laughs> and decluttered, yep. yes. And um, there's a lot of things we can talk about in the bedroom, but just the bedroom should be your de-stressing chamber. Mm-hmm. It should be like your spa world. Mm-hmm. And you just go with that so that you can rebuild and repair during the night. Mm-hmm. Um, kitchens need to be as clutter-free as possible. And I know large families, that's a challenge, but it's a goal to strive mm-hmm. for. Just try to get everything off the counter. Um, if your children are overweight or they have a um, high energy or whatever, um, it could be what they're eating. So. 
get rid of all the temptations and mm -hmm. set the fruit out. Yeah, and I do, so limiting the club in the kitchen, I really do think that this is, it's a cool concept to create these open shelves of these glass to like, because you have to be intentional with it, and then it almost makes you feel more intentional with everything else, because exactly. you're intentional with that, why would you have all this stuff on the countertop too? Right, yeah, uh, So and it detracts. I mean, you, you yeah. now de did this intentionally, mm -hmm. but now all of a sudden the, all the junk on the counter detracts from that, and you don't even see it anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. sometimes you know you do something really cool with a subway tile or something on a backsplash. Well, now you've got all this junk sitting in front of it. You don't even see yeah, it. Yeah, you don't even see what you, so, what you did. Yeah, so. yeah, so. Well, I think those are great takeaways. Yeah, um, but if somebody wants to to figure out how they can work with you, or they want to follow you, or how do people how do people get hold of you? Well, they can call me. Um, they can call me. They can email me, or they can go to my uh, Facebook page. So, or you can go to my website. Mm -hmm. It does it all those work. So, redefinedhome.com is my website. And it's Redefined Home on Facebook yep. as well? Okay. It's Redefined Home on Facebook as well. Um, I will put a little plug out there. There is a Redefined Home boutique, which is in Arizona or New Mexico. <laughs> That's not, not, Nita. It. not, Nita. not Nita. it. It's <laughs> Redefined Home, West Des Moines, Des Moines <laughs> Iowa, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Central Iowa. And so, um, so there's that, and then um, of course you can find my contact information on either one of those places. So that you can email me through either one of those places, or you can call me through nice. one of those places. Nice. Well, we hope that you get a hold of Nita yes. or Zenith yes. and and uh, do a project with us or with, with Nita. Um, or both it, of us at the same time. Or at the same exact time. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! No, but it was it was a pleasure chatting with you yes. today and, and learning some things about what you do. Um, so uh, we appreciate you guys listening, and we'll see you later.